On this episode of Be Better, I receive a golf lesson with Monty Scheinbloom, and we get my impact position from this to this, doing something totally counterintuitive, and we show you exactly how it was done. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Just take a second and subscribe because we'll be doing new videos about every week or so. I'm trying to put out a new video every Wednesday. This is Monty Scheinblum, former World Long Drive champion and now golf coach to guys on the PGA Tour and other tours. And uh, we did a series of videos that you can see in the link here about some really detailed discussion about the golf swing. And now we're going to try to put it into practice. So Monty and I are going to do a lesson for me. I think I'm a lot like a lot of golfers out there, so I think the things that are going to make me better are really put on this video because they're going to make you better. I can guarantee you, you will see a shank in this video from me. But I'm hoping by the end of it, I'll be on a path to getting rid of that and to some really good golf. Excellent. So we're just going to start the lesson right now. So what would you do in a normal lesson when somebody shows, shows up and tells you what I did? Well, you know, if it's someone's first time, yeah. you know, I ask them about... You know what their skill level is, what they shoot, uh, what they think their issues are, and you just did a great job of doing right. all that. I've seen your swing before. Yeah. Here is the problem that I see a lot of. You see a lot of swings out there where people mistake good rhythm and a free-flowing, pretty swing for it being good. Okay, and. When someone has a bad day, their friends will all say, oh, it's all in your head. And then they'll go, well, it's not in my head. I just, like you said, how, how is shanking a ball in my head? Oh, no. Shank it. As good as your swing looks aesthetically, you should never shank a ball. You should be shooting lower than you are. And I can just see on certain days that, you know, a little bit of pressure, you had a bad night's sleep, and, you know, your neck's a little twisted. All these mismatched parts are just going to send you off the rails. Haywire. Yeah. yeah. Okay. From your golfing machine days, you have that, that flow load. Yes. Okay? Uh -huh. I'm not a real big fan of that because even though it it is put in there to sustain lag and create lag, yeah. most people, you have to match the parts or not only do you not sustain it, you throw it away. Yes. Because when your arms are going like this and you're setting late, yeah. quite often what happens is, is the arm swing will overrun the rotation of the body, and then the hips will fire early, so it'll, be, it'll look like this. When your body feels that there's no handset, or yeah. the handset's very late, mm -hmm. it will continue the arms moving in order to give you more time to set. So you're traveling further, it's setting, and then you're just going like that. Now. Okay. We get into the one that causes you the huge issue. Is because you're stuck, your body needs to find an avenue to the ball. The ball is sitting here. And you're and you can see it in the video. Your right heel is up and your yep. arms are all the way back here. Well, your body being a lot smarter than you are understands that you're gonna be back here somewhere. So it moves the upper body forward. Now, from this avenue, I've got, I mean, from this position, I've got an avenue to the ball. You see that in my swing. My head starts here, and by the time I'm an impact, it's moved eight inches, maybe six inches. I mean, a lot. If, if you draw a circle around your head at address, yeah. your head is completely outside of the circle when you make impact. Okay. okay? And so then the goal of the float load is to create lag and shaft lean. But again, your body reacts to being this far forward, which is a really steep swing. And then with your arms trailing, if you went into a shaft lean position, guess what you're gonna get? Either a monster divot or El Hosel. Yeah. Okay? I get both. So yeah. that's that's where those okay. come from. So then your body is forced to go like this. As a matter of fact, the days where you're playing the best is where you're dumping the lag and the shaft lean the most. What we're going to work on today is going to be, uh, what if we could put it into four things, what would they be? Actually, I would only say three. Three, okay. Three. I would say a little bit earlier wrist set. So earlier wrist set, we'll put that right here. Okay. That is going to be the thing that... 
without doing this, because I used to do this. Right. Yeah. It's and that's probably how I got this, because correct. I want a one-piece trying, takeaway. You know, right. yeah, you want the one-piece takeaway, keep your club yeah. outside your hands, Scottish lag, all that good stuff. Yeah. Earlier wrist set, Earlier okay, that's wrist first. Set, which hopefully and usually leads to a shorter arm swing. That's kind of so 1A. Yeah. yeah, okay. And then while I understand that the hips do in fact lead, yours are leading too much, so we need to get you an intent where your arms get started out in front of you a little bit earlier. Okay, so number two would be my transition needs to change for the arms, arms to feel like they're going first. Yes. Okay. You'll never... I, look, we all know we've seen the, the, you know, the 40 handicappers and the beginners, they go like this. Yeah. Okay. Experienced golfers couldn't do that if they tried. I've literally tried it with hundreds of golfers. I said, look, I want you to hit this seven iron, start the arms, don't move the lower body, don't let it move first. Haven't had a single person be able to do it yet. So no matter how hard you try, this is going to move first. Okay, so that's two. Arms are going to have to feel like they start first. The third. The third oh, one, we can hope. If you set the wrist a little earlier and shorten your arm swing, 1A and 1B, yeah. and you get your arms started a little sooner and getting in front of your body, 50-50 chance that number three, which is the head moving laterally, yeah. goes away. Okay, cool. That's what we're going to work on. Now, would you call this a serious case? Is it, Was this somebody like, if I was going into, if this was a medical situation, would I be you know, in code blue, or would I be, is this, you know, fixable, or what do you think? You know, any golf instructor worth his salt can look at somebody and say, oh, look, here's the problems, A, B, C. Yeah. Okay? All golf instruction is about is communicating to the person in front of you what, how their intent needs to change. Look, you know, it, it, putting your swing next to Tiger and saying, oh, look, or, or you know, Adam Scott or Hogan or whatever, yeah. and say, look, here's where you are, here's where they are, you need to get there. Yeah. That's not helpful. No, it's not. Okay? Telling, having a discussion with you on what intent is going to link your arms up yeah. better, what intent is going to keep your head back yeah. more. And, and sometimes it's completely out of the box, which comes to the guy I'm talking about. Yeah. I got him to create lag and shaft lean and get his arms linked up by saying, don't start with him. Because his intent was fire the lower body and oh, hold the leg. This is going to retain everything. Right, yeah. and hold the leg. Snap in a towel. Okay. Right. And I said, look, from the top of the swing, fire that right wrist as soon as you can. Try to go like this at impact. And he looked at me like I had lost my mind. I said, you're right. I've lost my mind. I'm crazy. Just do it. Just humor me. Yeah. And he did it, and he's like, that, that's ridiculous. I made contact like that. And I showed him the video, and he scratched his head and went out uh, two days later and shot his best round in 18 months. Oh, great. So, you know, I don't always get that lucky, yeah. Yeah. but that's what this, it's a discussion. All right, let's do it. Okay. What is this? This is a flight scope launch mod. Okay. It tracks yeah. the flight of the ball. It tracks the path, the face to path. Some of it, it does mathematically. Okay. an algorithm, yeah. but it spits out numbers, club head speed, ball speed, yeah. how much the ball curved, how far the ball went, uh, the angle of attack on the club, the, the, the face to path ratio, yeah. what the path was. But for you, it's gonna be the shaft. Yep, the that top. is, that is so funny because all I care about in golf, even more than, than shooting great scores, is having good shaft weight. Right. And I don't have good shaft And this has, dynamic loft and impact. Okay. Okay. So seven irons are around 36 degrees okay. plus or minus. Yep. Okay. So when we look at the dynamic loft on on the thing, if it's less than 36 degrees, you've got shaft. Shaft. Cool. Okay. And so that's what we're looking for. We're going to see how the changes, you know, this is generally what I do. I don't like letting people look at their array of numbers because they'll, oh, well, I heard that the average X on tour is this, and then their head explodes. Yeah. I like to have people look at one number and say, look, before you were this, now you're that, that's improving. Okay, so all I want you to do here, first off, just take a regular swing, just, yeah. just hit the ball. So you are eight degrees down. Okay. okay? That's very steep for a seven. Okay. Okay. To use the tour numbers, the average seven iron on the tour is around three and a half degrees. 
plus or minus some. Yep. So as you can see, eight degrees down is very, very steep. Okay. So what you're doing is, is you're not creating shaft lean by getting the hands forward. You're creating shaft lean by getting yep. the body forward. It's basically, I'm putting it way back in my stance. Right. By, yeah. so, so in other words, I'm holding this yeah. right, for a second. Yeah. So like, look, I have no wrist angle. But I have shaft lean. Yep, that's okay. me. That's because I see all the be all the best players. They're off their left leg with right, their hands, and, like and, this. and I'm so so. You're de-lofting yeah. the club by getting in front of it, but you're like this. Yep. You see, you know, we've got the video. You can see it. You're like this at impact. Yep, I know. So, so what we're trying to do is is actually funny enough. We're trying to reduce how much actual shaft lean you have okay. impact, but shallow out the angle. Of the yep, top. you're. Your shaft, or dynamic loft impact was 27, yeah. okay? You're down eight degrees. We yeah. want your dynamic loft to come up, so come up from maybe 27 degrees to 30 or 32 degrees, maybe 31 degrees, and bring down your angle of attack from maybe eight to four or five. So have the shaft leaning forward a little less and be a little more shallow. Correct. A lot of this is technical, but you know, it's, how I measure things. I don't have these discussions with students. Right. I keep this stuff to myself and I say very simply, yes, that was better and these numbers are better and the ball flew straighter. But for the sake of discussion and having everybody understand when they hear these terms, I'm explaining. So now, yeah. we're gonna improve everything right now. All I want you to do, step up to the ball. All I want you to do is take a backswing where all it is is a wrist set. Yep and then you feel your arms go forward as your head stays back. Okay, so just in, in a drill, it's gonna be wrist set, arms forward. Sorry about that, That's Mark. okay. But that, that, that happens that, all the time. <laughs> That's what we're gonna do. Okay, All right. so you're gonna get your arms forward while your head stays back. Okay. Wrist set, arms forward, head back. Okay, that was much better, okay? okay? Your arms linked up to your turn much better. They weren't so far behind you. Now, here's what's really funny. We just changed your angle of attack from down eight to down three. That's what we want. Oh, great. Yeah, that's shallow. Oh, cool. That's really shallow. Yeah. Okay. Down three, you're, you're galled with that. Oh, okay. okay? All right. And you, you lean the shaft even more forward. Okay. Well, it came off a little bit low. Yeah. So now, this is, this is the weird thing, is you are so used to hanging on and losing it. Yeah. Whereas now, because you're shallower and your head is behind the ball, you're going to be able to release the club a little bit earlier and yeah. not hang on. I cannot, with my swing now, I cannot release the club. Ball goes straight up no, in the air. I just can't do it. Okay? You have to reverse your feet. Okay. You are trying so hard to get the wrist forward that you never get the arms forward. Okay. When you try to get the arms forward, you can go ahead and let the club go. Okay. So here's the fun part. Hit this ball, and you're going to combine two fields. And those that have seen my short game video are going to know exactly what I'm talking about here. When you swing, you're going to feel your wrist do this. Set, throw. Right? So that's part of the drill I was just doing. Is set, but then do the opposite. And throw. Okay. okay. But, you're going to throw with your arms moving forward. Okay. So, yeah, don't just stop your arms and throw. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Okay? Keep the head back and just go like this. Yep. See, now we've got something. Okay. Okay? You had yeah. a trouble. Even though you felt like you were going like yeah, this. Yeah, th that one, just to tell everybody... Felt like uh, Golf Channel Martin Hall says I was flipping burgers through him back. Okay, <laughs> really. But here's the thing: like the guy I told you about, whose screenshot I yeah. used, it's a weird phenomenon, but it happens. Here's the sequence of events: in your mind, you're trying to go like this. Yeah. Okay. When you start to go like this, your right arm speeds up. When your right arm speeds up, your body reacts by pivoting harder. Yeah. When your right arm speeds up and you pivot harder, it is not physically possible to go like this. And now, we can look at the telltale sign. Okay. So Angle of attack, two degrees down. 
extremely shallow. Okay. Awesome. And it wasn't as short. I mean, it's there's wind today. Okay. But that, that was a long seven iron. Okay. 170 and yards for something that. Your dynamic, was your dynamic lofted impact was 26 degrees. So. The shaft was leaning forward 10 degrees. I could even go for more burger flipping. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that was your lowest spin loft yet. You had a 28.5 spin loft, which is the difference between the two. Cool. Okay. Which means that's compression, that's efficiency. The very first one you had, you had eight degrees, seven or eight degrees more compression on this one than the full one where you were trying to hold the lag and lean the shaft over. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So that's over 20% better compression. And it didn't really make my swing much slower. No. Even though that was just a drill swing, I mean, the okay. it went fast. So, so here you go. Your half back swing, flipped right wrist, carried 164 yards. Yeah. That's probably pretty close to how far you hit a hole. Yeah, I mean, that's my 7-iron, 165. Okay. Yeah. So you essentially went and hit it as far as you hit your full one because the swing was efficient. So all you're going to do is go like this with your wrist, okay? Going to go back and keep the head back. Exactly right. Ready, Monty? I am. Because right. to me, that felt like the only thing I was doing in that swing felt like the wrist was snatching it back and flipping it through. Which the snatch and flip is the thing is. I mean, Everything from, you don't from want. the world that I come from, golfing machine is a See, and, and, and again, I know none of these things are correct. Yes. Okay? But, I mean, nobody wants to only set their wrist in the back so mm -hmm. Nobody wants to flip their right wrist. But for you, those intents help you link your body parts up. Yeah. What I just put you through, again, people who know me, that's, it's called, I put out a video, it's called the no-turn cast row. Yeah. Okay, that's what, that's what I was just putting you through. And you've watched enough good golfers, that is plenty long of a backswing for a 7-iron. No, it's perfect. Okay, now. I'd be very happy with Now let's draw a little circle around your head, and you'll see no forward head movement, and look at how your arms are not trailing your body. Yeah. Okay? And my right, my right heel is not like way your off right the ground. Your right heel is not way yeah. off the ground. And look. The, the front, because the, the overcast, the high speed shutter, yeah. didn't get you right at impact, but that's obviously not a flip. So we're going to work on it for a while, and then we'll be back in that fast because we'll be editing. And we'll, I'll be returning to you with an amazing impact position. Monty guarantees it. Well, Absolutely. We'll, all right, cool. Okay, we're mid lesson here. We're having some good results. I would say beyond good results, some pretty great results, amazing things. But right now, his only intent yep. is to make no body rotation, yep. only set the wrist on the backswing. Setting and, it and flipping it. And flipping that That's wrist as, as hard as he can. And I'm going to give him the videos of the before and after, and they're pretty illuminating. But, you know, to... It pretty much went from his right heel was way off the ground and there was a gap between his right arm and he's hitting like this to trying to flip it on purpose and now he's in there like that with his heel barely off the ground. It's pretty amazing when you see the differences that he's made in his swing in what was essentially about 15 or 20 minutes. It's pretty remarkable and you know all I'm doing is providing direction and most of the credit goes to Brandon because he was able to perform what I asked of him. Not every time yet, that's a little bit too much to ask, but right now, two out of every three shots he's hitting is really, really a good shot. And what we noticed is, is this little, tiny, little set and throw move that looks like a three-quarter swing. The club head speed is equal to the full swing he showed up with, and the ball speed, meaning how solid he's hitting the ball, is up four or five miles an hour. So in other words, he's basically just going like this and swinging just as fast as this. So now what we're gonna do is, is the no turn cast drill. All he's gonna try and do is make no turn, just set the wrist and try and nuke it by flipping the wrist through impact. Snatch and a flip, nobody. Just a snatch and a flip, that's it. That was pretty good. I hit that right on the button. Yes, you did. So now here's here's some interesting things that we can look at here as soon as it tracks that one. It stayed in the air pretty long. Very time. interesting things. Okay. 
So we're going to go back to the original numbers here. His full swing, like what he thought was a full swing seven when he got here with a 7-iron, was around 91 miles an hour. And um, his ball speed was, you know, smash factors weren't very good. He was well under 1.3. So these last two shots he hit, where he was 91 miles an hour with his full swing, he was around 91 miles an hour with the drill swing. Now when he tried to the, nuke like it... Like the three-quarter drill swing. Yeah. The three-quarter drill swing. The same speed as my, my friend in the board swing. All Absolutely. Time, yeah. Now when he tried to go full on it, he was 95 miles an hour, so that's four miles an hour faster, where all he's trying to do is set it and flip it as fast as he can. And his ball speed was all the way over 120 miles an hour. And even though it's a little bit downwind, that, that last 7 iron he hit went over 190 yards. Yeah. Like I said at the beginning of this video, I really think the things that will make me better are going to be the thing. If you're watching this video, I hate to say it, you're a golf nerd. And if you're a golf nerd, you've been at it for a while, and I think a lot of the things that are going to make me better are going to help you as well. So thanks a lot, Monty. Yeah. Absolutely. What's I, I think you know all these discussions we're having and all these technical numbers and stuff are spinning out and you're saying how it feels. Everyone's gonna go, okay, yeah, I see that. When you edit the before and after videos and positions on what was your normal swing and what your intents were versus and, and flight scope data. And flight scope. And when it's just you think thinking you're doing this. People are going to look at that and go, okay, these guys are full of it. There's no way they didn't do some, you know, trickery, different videos. They screwed around with it. No, this it's, is all real time it, today. It, it, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's real. It's, it's going to be unbelievable how much his swing improved just by eliminating all of these excess thoughts. And just to, to recap, here's what the, the drill is. And here's how it worked for Brandon. His swing was lots of arm swing, and he got his right arm disconnected, his hands way too high, and the shaft across the line. Then he'd fire his lower body and try and hold the angle. Mm -hmm. All right? Yeah. So then he's in this position, and then he got his head forward, flipped the club, and hit it like this. You're going to see that. All I told him to do was feel like the only intent in his backswing was to set the wrist. Here's the thing. Your body, and I mean everybody's body, will not allow this. As soon as your wrists start to set, your arms start to swing and your body starts to turn. And you're going to see him only feeling doing this, getting into a perfect, just short of parallel position. And again, when I said flip the right wrist from here, that's his normal start. When I said flip the right wrist, it made his arm start, which makes his hips turn, and it delivers the club to here, even though he's feeling like he's doing this. So this is the most important thing about each one of you getting better personally. Yeah. You need to find your intent. Looking at great players in slow motion and slowing down their swings and saying, ooh, I want to get to this position, that doesn't work. Those are results. You need to find the intent that puts you in those places, and sometimes, actually quite often, the intents are completely counterintuitive. That's why the game is so difficult right. and why it's so hard to improve because it doesn't make any sense sometimes. Because if I see my swing model that I always look at, Charles Schwartz, doing this, I'm going to go out to the range and start right. doing that all right. day. It's right. not going to help. And try some wild things. Try, I mean, just really experiment with it. Check out Monty's videos, especially in relation to this one, the No Turning Cast Drill, which, is, which will be here in an annotation. And, uh, I think we did some good work today. Absolutely. All right, cool. Thanks, man. Yeah.